In addition to the really exciting Dolly model that's able to generate images from text prompts, OpenAI has also released Clip, connecting text and images. This paper is using a contrastive learning approach to unify images and text and turn uh, image classification into a text similarity problem. So here's the high level overview of the algorithm. They start off with contrastive pre-training where they use all of the image text pairs from an internet dump and then they match them with the similarity from a batch of images. So an example would be this text, uh, Pepper the Aussie Pup, and then you have this image and then say this, this uh, batch contains say like avocados, trucks, cars, other kinds of images in this uh, batch of images and then you have other kinds of description like say uh, this is like a SUV and then the type of the car, another kind of text description like that that you would make similar with that batch in the, uh, with that image in the image batch. So you do this contrastive uh, pre-training task where you're aligning this uh, text with the images similar to this paper uh, convert. What this paper does is it, uh, you have these chest radiographs and you have these uh, short textual descriptions. So you use this contrastive uh, pre-training task to align the representation such that uh, this encoding is more similar with this text, text description than this image is. So once they pre-train with that, now they can fine tune, well, they don't even need to actually fine tune with gradients, but they can transfer it to a new task zero shot by using the same idea as uh, pattern exploiting training. So what they do is they insert a photo of a, uh, and then you just insert the object classes, and now you turn it into the same kind of uh, text similarity task as a contrastive pre-training task, and allows you to do zero shot image classification. The blog post begins by describing some of the limitations of the current approach to computer vision and image classification models. Although models like ResNet 101 or DenseNet or InceptionNet are really good at just the top 5 or top 1% classification accuracy, they fail with these uh, modifications like the ImageNet A, ImageNet C, these robustness tests or adversarial examples, as well as these slight differences like ImageNet sketches that differ from the original ImageNet distribution. Compared to this clip contrastive task, which performs much better on these different kinds of datasets. The blog post continues to describe inspiration in vision language models and the idea of a zero shot image classifier. They cite a lot of inspiration from this work titled Vertex. In this case, you use the visual representation, you encode this 224 by 224 by RGB image into a set of uh, feature vectors, and then you use this to predict the caption. So this is one way of aligning the vision language domains to learning some kind of vision language representation. And then this uh, convert paper is another way of doing it with a contrastive learning objective. So they cite some of the previous works that have inspired this work, uh, like Vertex and Convert, to try to align the vision and language representations. So we begin with this video by quickly walking through how this works, but some quick details in the approach. They're particularly using a batch of 32,768 of these text snippets to be paired with 32,768 images. Then you have the pattern exploiting training where you uh, transfer this to the zero shot task by inserting a photo of a, uh, and then you insert the, uh, the different classes. So this is the pattern, a, a photo of a uh, blank. So they describe uh, some of the other problems that Clip is able to solve that are currently hindering, say, uh, training a ResNet on ImageNet. The first problem with the previous approach to image classification is that these data sets are really expensive to build. The ImageNet dataset requires over 25,000 workers to annotate these 14 million images over 22,000 object categories. So employing 25,000 uh, people to do this is a really expensive way to construct these labeled datasets. And lately we've seen a lot of self-supervised learning that's able to learn representations from unlabeled data, like how Clip is using uh, this contrastive learning task to learn a representation just by scraping the internet rather than having to say, deploy 25,000 workers to annotate 14 million images or this kind of expensive effort. And the next thing is that the ImageNet model is pretty narrow. It only knows these 1,000 ImageNet categories, but it can't generalize in the same way that Clip can just generalize by inserting a new kind of uh, pattern to uh, transfer it to this new task. So then we see some more, uh, they cite random non cherry picked examples. You see the uh, pattern example, a photo of guacamole, a photo of ceviche, a photo of edamame. And you see how this pattern explaining training is adapted to have this text similarity class or text image matching task with these images and then these text prompts. And they see the same case here, television studio and these other examples. Uh, and you can see show more if you want to see uh, more of these examples on the open AI blog post. They cite one more issue with having this supervised learning training set and say fitting a ResNet on this supervised learning set. 
And the problem is that this training set isn't really representative of the performance because it's essentially memorized or cheated by training on this data set compared to these zero shot models that they, by design, they can't have memorized the data set because they don't do any training on this data set. So they also show that when you do study for ImageNet or you know fit the linear classifier that has gradients on top of the uh, features that are extracted from the clip model, it does improve the accuracy by almost 10%. But, and then they show that this robustness test is still uh, not hindered compared to these other kind of models of uh, supervised learning that study or memorize the original data set. So some of the key takeaways are that the CLIP model is highly efficient, particularly in addition to using this contrastive uh, learning objective, which is different from the image to text approach in the vertex model where you encode the image and then predict the text caption from it. Compare that with this contrastive uh, similarity matching task it's more efficient. In addition to that, they use the Vision Transformer. So the Vision Transformer is uh, this model developed by Google. Compared to ResNet where you just take this whole image and then pass it through this sequence of convolutional blocks with skip connections, this uh, Vision Transformer breaks the image up into multiple patches and then it treats that patch as if, as if it's like a sequence of tokens for natural language processing and then it will uh, use the position embedding like in the transformers, use the transformer encoder, the self-attention layers stacked together to perform computer vision tasks. The next takeaway is that CLIP is flexible and general. So they talk about uh, additionally testing CLIP on fine-grained object classification, geolocalization, action recognition in videos, and optical character recognition. So particularly fine-grained object classification would be, uh, there are some data sets, I think it's called like Stanford cars, where you're not just classifying broad uh, categories like CIFAR 10, where CIFAR 10 is say, uh, like very different things like cat, dog, truck, airplane, frog, compared to say a data set of cars and then you're uh, classifying the specific type of the car. So that's the difference between you know, fine-grained object classification. And they're showing that CLIP is able to do this flexibly with this pattern exploiting uh, framework just pre-trained on, uh, on the internet pairs of text and images. Finally, they do bring the CLIP model down to earth a bit with some of the limitations. One of this is that it fails at these uh, complex tasks like counting the number of objects in an image or predicting how close the nearest car is in a photo. So on these more complex tasks and then further they cite that it doesn't perform as well on say the MNIST data set as training on the MNIST data set would do, even though that's back to that original discussion on kind of memorizing studying or kind of overfitting to the test set with the train set. So zero shot clip still achieves 88% on MNIST. And again, to adapt this with something like the pattern explaining training, which is how you adapt CLIP to some kind of downstream task. You would say take an image of the MNIST digits like one, two, three, four, five. Then you'd say a photo of a, and then you have the text matching for a photo of a one, a photo of a two, a photo of a three, and then it would have some kind of matching score for each of those uh, text patterns. The authors report some of the broader impacts, like the bias that can be present in the data when it's scraped from the internet to do this representation learning. They cite how when you're pairing images of people age 0 to 20, they're more likely to be affiliated with language terms like criminal and animal. And then they show a potential uh, solution to this by adding the class child to the list of possible classes alongside, say, criminal and animal. If these are the two uh, like classes to insert in some template of this is a photo of a mask, and then the mask is where you insert the uh, object class labels. Then further, they describe a problem of uh, celebrity identification, that um, this is able to do celebrity uh, identification right off of the shelf, and you don't need to have uh, too much of a training set in order to do this task. So all in all, this is the new CLIP model developed by researchers at OpenAI. This is a really exciting new approach to using contrastive pre-training in order to then do zero-shot transfer with some kind of pattern-exploiting training to do image classification. This has an amazing flexibility, it doesn't require fine-tuning gradients, and it's a really interesting approach to the image classification problem. It's also cool to see that they use the Vision Transformer instead of the ResNet architecture. Thanks for watching this quick update from Henry AI Labs. Please subscribe for more updates on deep learning research and artificial intelligence news. Mm -hmm.